Today I'm gonna to go through my three diet principles that anyone can and should use to get healthier and get into better shape. All of this is pretty basic stuff, so if there's anything you don't understand yet, make sure you're paying attention so you can take these concepts home with you. Now, pay attention, 007. And then you can gradually apply these principles to get from where you are now to where you wanna be. Now, these are all in order of priority and importance, so bear that in mind when you're limited on choices on any given day. Point number one is energy balance, or calories in versus calories out. It's amazing the amount of people that don't understand the one single concept that determines whether you gain weight or you lose weight. If you can consume more calories than your body needs on a daily basis to perform its daily functions, then those excess calories are going to be stored in your body as excess weight. On the contrary, if you consume less calories on a daily basis than your body needs to perform its functions, then your body is going to supplement that extra calorie requirement with the energy reserves that you have on your body, so the muscle and the fat on your body. All of these diets from paleo, keto, intermittent fasting, they're all just mechanisms for calorie restriction. It's not the actual diet that you choose that's gonna make you lose weight, it's your adherence with that diet to maintain in a calorie deficit. So how can we actually apply this information to ourselves? How many calories you need in a day to replace the calories that you use in energy expenditure is called your TDEE, or Total Daily Energy Expenditure. This consists of two functions. One's a constant and one's a variable. The constant is your basal metabolic rate, or BMR. This is that given your current physiology, your body fat, your muscle mass, etc., what is the number of calories your body needs to perform its normal daily functions on a day where you're completely at rest. So imagine you're laying in bed all day, how many calories do you need to just stay alive and breathe? And we add to this your active calorie consumption. So this is the amount of calories used in doing any number of daily activities. This comes from thinking, chewing, walking, talking, temperature regulation, everything else that's above that basic level is your active energy expenditure. So take me as an example, my BMR is gonna be around 2000 calories and my active rate on a normal training day would be about one, one and a half thousand calories. So adding that 2000 to that 1500 is gonna give me a TDEE of around 3500 calories and that's what I need to maintain my daily weight of 88 kilograms. And once you've worked out your TDE, which you can do very easily by just Googling TDE calculator online and then putting in your details, here's three examples of what you might do next. So example one, you're a skinny person like I was and you wanna gain muscle. You need to eat in roughly a 500 calorie surplus so that you're building muscle without gaining excess fat. Example two, if you're a fat person and you wanna lose fat, then you wanna be eating in as much of a deficit as possible to get you to your goals as quickly as possible. So obviously if you didn't eat for two weeks straight, you're gonna lose weight pretty quickly but that's gonna impair your cognitive functions and your daily life too in intrusively and also it's not sustainable. So putting yourself in a deficit that's sustainable and it's gonna gradually tend you towards the body and the, the health that you desire. And then example three is like me now, someone that doesn't wanna change the uh, uh, their weight, they don't wanna go up, they don't wanna go down. So my goal is just to match my TDE as much as possible so that I maintain my constant weight. Principle two, is eat like your ancestors. This means living on as much of a whole food diet as possible and limiting your processed food consumption wherever you can. We now live in a time of mass consumption, whereas for all of human history, resources were scarce, and so you're biologically hardwired to try and maximize your calorie intake to give you the best chance of survival possible. And that's why foods like McDonald's, crisps, sweets, they all taste so good because of that high sugar and that high fat content. Your body then thinks, oh great, let's consume more of this fat, more of this sugar to give us as much energy res reserves as possible and store as much fat as possible for when times are tough in the future. But obviously now we live in the first time in human history where it's our responsibility to manage our consumption as much as possible. And this applies to more than just food as well. Throughout history, if you saw you were out and about and you saw something new, stimulating and interesting, it's gonna be in your interest to pay attention to that because it may give you vital information that you need for survival later on. But now we're exposed to so much extra stimulation like mainstream media and TikTok that your attention's constantly being hijacked. And these things are designed to command your attention for as long as possible. And in turn, they end up frying your dopamine receptors and messing up your attention span. So living in line with our biology is always gonna be the best course of action for maintaining good mental and physical health. And when it comes to food, this means eating the majority of your food from whole food sources. So for me, 80% of my food comes from sources like meat, fruit, eggs, vegetables, uh, grains, pasta, potatoes, nuts. Gradually making smarter choices to tend towards food choices like this will reset your taste buds and make you appreciative of those less processed foods. I remember my first struggle with this was when I was about 16, 17 years old, I would pour out a bowl of shreddies, which is like a sort of a low sugar cereal, but it's already like 10 grams of sugar per 100 grams. And then I would pour, have to pour sugar on top of it to make it interesting enough to eat, which is obviously horrific. Um, and then gradually over time, I've got to a position now where a bowl of shreddies, a cereal like that would be like plenty of sugar for me and that would be one of the sugariest things I can eat. So it's about gradually retraining yourself to eat more natural foods. The first step in this for you could be making dinner for yourself instead of eating ready meals so that you can control the amount of additives in your food. That's just another example. So the third and final principle is macros. So now we know how much to eat, 
um, and what to eat, but we don't know in what proportions to eat those things. So the thing to remember here is that protein and carbs have four calories per gram and fat has nine calories per gram. I have quite a fast metabolism and thrive on a high carb, high carb diet. So what I'm about to say applies perfectly to me, but may vary person to person. And I aim to eat protein, carbs, and fat in roughly a 25%, 65%, and 10% split of protein, carbs, and fat. So how do we arrive at this number? Firstly, the amount of protein consumption is the number one priority. So we wanna be consuming about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So for me, 88 kilos, that's about 194 pounds. So I wanna to, want to be consuming around 190 grams of protein per day. Timesing 190 by four to get the number of calories is 760 calories. Now, as discussed earlier, my TDE is 3,500. So we subtract that 760 calories from the 3,500, and this leaves us with 2,740. So then say we're consuming about 2,000 of the remaining calories and carbs, and then 740 in fat, which gives us that uh, 10% fat, 65% uh, carbs, and then 25% protein split. Now, I hope that was really boring and just solidified everything you already know and there was no point in you watching that video. But if not, or if any of that was new to you, then just remember these three main takeaways. Priority number one, eat the correct amount of calories. Priority number two, gradually make changes in your lifestyle to eat as naturally as possible. And priority number three, eat around one gram of protein per pound of body weight. If you gradually adhere to these three things in whatever way works for you, then you're gonna be off to a winner. Please subscribe if you haven't yet because I'm trying to get to a thousand so I'm out of that noob YouTuber status as quickly as possible. If you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more that is, um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.